We're coming your way from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Missouri tonight. Corey Dickerson and the Pirates take on Matt Carpenter and the St. Louis Cardinals. Game one of four. These two clubs just met last weekend over the Memorial Day holiday, and the Pirates won game one of that series, dropped the last two. Cardinals came back late in the finale. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk and Robbie Inspikowski and everybody talking about the slide yesterday at PNC Park. Joe Musgrove, uh, he made a lot of friends. Uh, not that he didn't already have friends on the Pirates team, but he's almost reached hero status in Pittsburgh because of this slide yesterday, Bob. Well, it's not often that you uh, think of a pitcher as being a, a hard-nosed player out on the field, but uh, you watch this, Musgrove going in very late, very hard, stands right up into bias. Uh, and since Baez didn't make a throw, there was nothing they could do about it. So it, it was great to uh, to see him do that. And, and uh, you know, that, that's kind of the, the way I think you need to retaliate more than anything else is play the game hard-nosed yourself. It was good theater, but I think what, what really stood out was that Joe Musgrove pitched seven strong innings again. Absolutely. All this slide business kind of overshadowed that we haven't been playing very good baseball. Well, Musgrove put an end to that also. Well, the Pirates uh, are meeting the Cardinals for the first time here at Bush Stadium, but, you know, the first uh, four games of the season series the Pirates won so they've won four of the six games played so far and pretty much beating the Cardinals in almost every facet. It's kind of unusual for me to see these kind of numbers always the, the Pirates in St. Louis are neck and neck year after year almost doesn't matter uh, what their team's records are but this is a little one-sided here especially you look at the runs uh, you know, seven over seven innings at 13 to six. Uh, that, that's that's important. I mean, that's where games are won and lost late. Yeah, the Cardinal bullpen has uh, been taking a beating of late. Well, Jack Flaherty is on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals. Bucks saw him last week when the Redbirds were in town. We'll talk Jack and more coming up next. Talk, talk, one, two, three, talking, talking here, talking, talking. One, two, three, test, test, one, two, three, one, two, three, test. Flaherty threw a lot of, oh, he's a guy that throws all the sliders, correct? Let me look here, never mind. I will just look at the back in St. Louis it was raining about an hour ago but I think we're going to be okay clear skies right now not bad temperature wise first of the four game series here in St. Louis and there is Jack Flaherty he is going to make his sixth start of the season the Pirates have seen him in the past including last week this uh, matchup resumes Jack Flaherty uh, rookie right hander they are very high on him yeah they should be very high on him uh, he, he really 
Uh, to me, is showing a great slider. It's a super pitch. He threw a ton of them against us in the last start. It's a real tough one not to chase. He's not a real super hard thrower, but he's got good stuff. But if he's got that uh, slider going with the command of it, uh, he's going to be tough to beat. They've got to get him to where he's walking some people. You see the numbers there, walks per nine innings against us, almost five. That's what we're looking for uh, again tonight, see if he can help us out. He was much better last time out, which was Saturday against Trevor Williams. He went six against the Pirates, gave up one run, walked a couple, struck out four, got the win as the Cardinals beat the Pirates at PNC Park 4-1 on Saturday. And we check out the Allegheny Health Network injury update. Uh, this is pretty incredible. If you look at who is out for the Cardinals, including uh, the pitcher yesterday, Alex Reyes, who came off the DL to make a start yesterday after having Tommy John surgery. He hadn't pitched since 2016. So he made his first start yesterday and then right away today back on the DL with a lat injury. Yeah, you know, you always say that, uh, you know, you shouldn't complain about injuries. Everybody's got to fight through them. But I think the Cardinals might have a little something to complain about. I mean, that's quite a list uh, to have on your DL. But better them than us. Yeah, and you got to take advantage of it. We'll see if Trevor Williams and the Pirates can do that. We'll talk Mayamo Trevor from St. Louis coming up. At the Cardinals, Josh Bell, Colin Moran warming up here at Bush Stadium. And Trevor Williams is as well. And he has pitched very well, really, since being put in the rotation early last year. But uh, the, the Cardinals have caused him problems. Yeah, I would say he's been uh, you know, our most consistent starting pitcher uh, this season. But uh, you know, a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, you know, everybody has him in that last game against the Cardinals. And as you just mentioned, it seems like it's always been the Cardinals that uh, has given him a hard time. Uh, tonight, uh, as usual, he'll be trying to move the fastball around, spot it, keep it on the edges, and pitch inside with it. And uh, if he has a good command, he's putting it where he wants to. It doesn't matter if they're red birds on their chest or not. I think he'll do just fine. But he's got to have that good command so he can pitch his style. That's Trevor Williams on the mound for the Pirates. Getting ready to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Williams looking for win number six. Austin Meadows not in the starting lineup. We'll have that for you and the first pitch momentarily. First, we go back to the studio for a game break and Rob King.
Baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Show your military appreciation and use hashtag hats off for heroes. T-Mobile will donate $1 for each post. And by the law firm of Bordis and Bordis. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. Let's go Bucks! First trip into St. Louis in 2018. Beautiful ballpark and a beautiful night for baseball. Trevor Williams getting ready for the Bucks. Taking on these Cardinals. Show you those numbers, his career. And Adam Wainwright, one of those one of the several players we showed you on the Health Network injury update with Miles Michaelis. We will pitch tomorrow night. Michaelis will. By the way, we are. So he's trying to uh, to learn the special handshake. Yes. Oh yeah. Take some time. Tommy Pham has learned it. But just reading Bob that uh, the general manager of the Cardinals said late this afternoon we were just noting that Alex Reyes who pitched four innings yesterday and went on the disabled list. Uh, Michael Gersh who is the general manager of the St. Louis Cardinals today called that right last strain is significant. So it's not going to be a couple starts. It's going to be more than a few starts. And here come the Redbirds. Jack Flaherty. 22 year old from Burbank California. Former first round pick of these Redbirds. Check out the RAV4 Pirates starting lineup. Josh Harrison. Last night in his sixth career leadoff home run. Francisco Cervelli was back in the lineup after missing three days. A little bit of a flu bug. Stunning Marte. He is in center field. Josh Bell hits cleanup. Corey Dickerson in left with Colin Moran at third. Gregory Polanco gets a second straight start out in right. Austin Meadows sits. Jordy Mercer is at short and Trevor Williams. Uh, Flaherty is uh, right at the uh, edge of all the shadows. And as you see his numbers, they are not too bad for that youngster. League hitting just 204 off of him. Fastballs and sliders. That's about 90% of what he throws. So Flaherty with this defense behind him. Dexter Fowler is in right. Tommy Pham in center. Harrison Bader is the left fielder. Matt Carpenter at third. Jairo Munoz the shortstop. Greg Garcia is at second. Jose Martinez at first. Francisco Pena behind the plate. So not a lot of familiar names in that Cardinals lineup with the injuries and a couple of players uh, including Marcel Osuna not playing for Mike Matheny. Osuna's got the bad finger. Colton Wong the saw is not in the lineup. So Josh Harrison. What a big hit that was for Jay Hay when the Cubs took that one nothing lead in the top of the first inning at PNC Park Harrison came to bat against Kyle Hendricks and homered over the Clemente wall to tie it. Buck scored one more the next inning and that was it 2 1 final. That was an entertaining game wasn't it. Yes it was. was so much it, two to one you think oh, not much happened but something going on constantly <laughs> the whole nine innings great. Jay Hay ready to go and the first pitch is a breaking ball. Eighty four degrees at game time you see Harrison's season numbers missed five weeks and a base hit for Jay Hay. Great start. Start him off with two sliders. Obviously the Pirates know that they're going to see a lot of those and that one was hung right over the inside corner. The little spinner right there they put it on a tee for him. Look at the reaction of Flaherty. Already upset with himself. Two pitches in. Now it's Cervelli. Six for 13 against Cardinals pitching this season. He was hitless in four at bats last night. Gets a strike call there from James Hoy. No, you can see 
Cervelli. Cervelli says no. It was not a strike. Oh, gentlemen. Boy, and still not happy. Look back at the uh, home plate umpire. It was well inside. You know, he's got a beef. There it is. WB Mason strike zone gives you the evidence. With seven homers, 30 runs batted in. Valerity made six appearances last year, five starts, a 6.33 ERA. Starley Marte on deck for Pittsburgh. You can see the early game shadows they deal with, looking out at the bright sun and everything behind the pitcher. Your eyes get adjusted to looking into that sun and then you're trying to pick up the spin on the baseball, which doesn't have any light on it, it's in the shade. Six ten central time. One ball, two strike count. As Jack Flaherty, he's walked nine, struck out thirty one in his thirty innings. Thirty fourth pick overall in two thousand fourteen was Flaherty. It's a compensation pick. Carlos Beltran signing with the Yankees and they got that extra pick in that first round. Three different levels of the Cardinal system last year. Mike Matheny. Well, the Pirates thinking about running. One ball, two strikes. And this ball gets away. Harrison will wind up at second base. Well, one thing we've uh, we've noticed uh, about Martinez over at first base, I mean, he's not a gold glover over there. He's uh, trying to learn that position. They would, they, he's got a great bat, so that's uh, where they're trying to put him in, out there at first base. But he will struggle at times. Unable to pick that one out of the dirt. Buckos. A chance to score early now. Got a piece of Cervelli to even the count. Ball had a little bit of run on it. After the air on the pitcher, and in scoring position, Cervelli's done a great job in these situations this season. Has driven in 30. Takes another pitch for a ball. You can see it. Everything inside to Cervelli. Checking again with James Hoy. Kind of a home run hitter now, so he's got to try to crowd him. That's what happens when you start hitting the way uh, he is. Nobody wants to let you get your arms extended. Seven home runs, 30 RBIs. A big 3 2 pitch in the first inning. He got him. Foul tip. After everything inside, he went with that slider. So he only got a piece of it. Here up, uh, Mike Pena holding on to it. Wow. Snow cone. You hear the ball tipped into the mitt for the first out. Not able to move the runners. Larity now faces Starling Marte. More concerned about Harrison. Larity gave up just one run in six innings last Saturday, and the one run came in the first inning on a home run. By Starling Marte. Just activated off the disabled list his first at bat after the 10 day DL stint. He 
went deep against Flaherty. Yeah, it wasn't a home run that scraped the back of the fence either. No, we'll see. 447, long. The runner at second base, love the score first. Boy, they are really holding him on. Speaking of that home run, in case you missed it, no, it was not a wall scraper. Beyond both bullpens, again, estimated distance 447 feet. Just rolled out of bed after a 10 day nap. Yeah. Hit one 440. Marte finds himself now the top 10 and hitting in the National League. Tied for eighth with that 309 batting average. He has seven hits in 23 at bats this season against Cardinals pitching. That's a 304 batting average against Redbirds hurlers. Another neat look from ground level here at Bush Stadium. Center cut for Marte. Marte would like to get a few of them right there tonight. Do some damage with that most of the time. One two count with Josh Bell to follow. Close. Watch this bright background. Uh, and now this is the angle the hitter has, but still you can see how dark the baseball is there. And that's that's the problem that hitters have. They're looking out into the bright sun, and baseball is a very dark gray coming in. Have to pick up the spin on that slider. And grounded to the shortstop. <laughs> Hit the ground ball right straight where the camera was looking. It's like we went back and they're fast forward in the time, saw the play, and then set it up. That was amazing. Right to Chiro Munoz. Look at this. Right there. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. That view. And you see the stumble by Marte out of the box. Sitting in the front row right behind home plate. Here's Josh Bell. And he takes a strike. Back door the slider just to get ahead for strike one. Bell had one hit in four at bats. Last night's victory, Pirates. Two runs on nine hits. About a third of the pitchers that these are pitches these guys are going to see are going to be that slider from there. Third, he's not going to you know, throw you, at, you know, anything else really off speed other than that. That's what you got to look for. We saw that with Jay. Hay. We saw two up, the second one, he smoked it in the left. Struck out four Pirates his last start last weekend. Earned his first career big league victory right here at Bush Stadium. The start before that made the 20th against the Phillies. Seven and two thirds innings. 13 strikeouts. A 5 1 win over the Phils here. Against the Bucks at PNC Park, 88 pitches. In the one run that Marte Homer. And struck him out looking. 
Brought that slider in. Lead off hit air. Pirates can't move him. and error and now we'll see how Trevor Williams fares against these Cardinals this is Mike Medini's lineup Matt Carpenter don't let that batting average fool you 224 look at the last 14 games hitting close to 400 Harrison Bader next then Tommy Pham and Jose Martinez Dexter Fowler just a 172 average for the veteran switch hitter Shiro Munoz Greg Garcia Tony Pena's kid Francisco Pena and then Jack Flaherty Mazzini looking across toward the other dugout. He and Clint Hurdle are great friends. And Trevor Williams now. There's Trevor's uh, numbers on the year after 11 starts. Uh, everything is in really good shape. ERA wins. Opposition batting average down to the 220s. Just keep on trucking. Carpenter has homered in three of his last four games. Did some damage against the Pirates over Memorial Day weekend. He homered to start the game on Saturday against Trevor Williams. When he hit about a buck forty uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, so don't let that batting average fool you. It's climbing. He's one of those guys that no matter what the batting average is, you don't take him lightly. Right. Handful of guys like that around the league that you know over the years they've hit us hard. So you're always leery of uh, a low batting average when those guys either come into the town or you go to their place. And yeah, Trevor Williams knows all about Carpenter. He is four for ten with a pair of homers in his career against Trevor Williams. So this is a Tremendous challenge for the Pirates right hander. Now you can see what he's trying to do. Put a baseball cap over the over four of the five pitches on that low outside corner. Lines it in the left. Five pitches right in that same spot. Yeah, right there. Five pitches right there. And he got to that one. So a second guesser would have, would say, well, went to the well a little too often. You need to go to you know, Go up, go in somewhere else. But maybe that's the adjustment they're trying to make on Car Carpenter. Just going to stay down and yeah. away from it. Maybe they've been, he's been hurt when he's tried to do something different. So. Yeah. Hold uh, that home run 
on the uh, Clemente wall on uh, Saturday. And, uh, the next night doubled on the top of the Clemente wall is first at bat. This is lined to left and it's first and second as Harrison Bader rips it into left. Fan, we check out the Pirates defensively. Francisco Cervelli catching Williams. It's Josh Bell, Josh Harrison on the right side of the infield. Double M, Mercer, Mor Moran on the left side with Dickerson, Marte, and Polanco left to right in the outfield. Francisco Cervelli back behind the dish, and now Tommy Pham hitting 271 with nine homers. Pops a butt up. Thank you very much. So one away. Oh, get the free out. Tommy Pham. Bunts and pops it up. Now Jose Martinez. Five homers, 31 ribbies. Keep hit. Five for eight in previous matchups against Trevor Williams. One of those late bloomers. to figure something out against these Cardinals. His sixth career start, ninth career appearance against the Redbirds. They're on a ground ball right here. That will help. Oh. Saw a few of the Cubs take big swings like say, that. Bias swings and misses. Yeah. Hey, that just opens up more holes for Williams to pitch to. Take that big long swing. Oh and two on Martinez. Dexter Fowler on deck. Martinez has hit into seven double plays. That's the most on the team. Mark Cervelli trying to uh, play a little decoy game there on the last pitch. He moved outside real early. And then uh, just before the pitch, then he moved back in, just in case they you know, mess around, given location, a base runner. Now, even on Jose Martinez. Remember Williams, 20 walks, 43 strikeouts, 11 starts. Opponents hitting only 228 against him. Lasted only four innings. About four runs, seven hits. Saturday versus the Cardinals. Now it gets interesting. Three and two. I don't think Trevor's uh, control is real good to the first base side of the plate right now. Early in this game first few hitters you can see he's very comfortable thrown to the third base side of the plate. And now they're loaded. After all those fastballs he said those three two breaking balls try to trick him a little bit. Martinez able to lay off. And tonight's Barrel Automotive League leaders stat the players with the longest active streaks without allowing a walk just ended. Corey Kluber, Mike Leak, Trevor Williams. Henry 
game tonight. Now loaded for Dexter Fowler. Ray Sirich, Pirates pitching coach there. And outside of first. That's a big shift on all three infielders, three of the four infielders, all on one side. Certainly looked like Fowler was trying to pull the ball. That bass swing. Got to hook it over there. That's where the defense is. They're waiting. Another strike. It's 0 and 2. The two right fielders in tonight's game trying to find their swings. The veteran Dexter Fowler, who snapped an 0 for 18 hitless streak last weekend at PNC Park, and yesterday had his second three hit game of the season against the Brewers, but still batting just 172. And to the Pirates right fielder, Gregory Polanco, this will score a couple, and it's 2 0. 2 pitch, a two run single for Fowler. Carpenter and Bader score. Look, they were trying to go uh, up and in, maybe off the plate a little bit. But wasn't a horrible pitch. They just uh, right on the very edge of the strike zone. Didn't hit it real hard, but hard enough for two runs. 19th and 20th RBIs, his second hit in 15 at bats against Pirates pitching this season. And the Cardinals continue to give Trevor a hard time. So Ray Sirich out. First inning visit for the Pirates pitching coach. The base hit to left. Harrison Bader pulled the ball to left. The bunt pop up by Pham and then the walk to Martinez. And on an 0 2 pitch to Dexter Fowler, a two run single. Jairo Munoz, last seven games, Munoz hitting at a 480 clip. He's been a pick-me-up for these Cardinals with Paul DeYoung on the disabled list. And that's fair inside the third base back. So Martinez will score. Fowler racing around. He's going to score. It's a two run double for Munoz and a four nothing first inning lead for the Cardinals. Now well, these are the kind of innings that you do anything to stay out of as a starting pitcher. You know, you, you know I'm, I'm always talking about bending but don't break. You know you give up a run here a run there. That's not that big of a deal. But the, the, the reason that you have that kind of a strategy is because you never want an inning like this where early in the game they put up a big crooked number of four so far and now you're fighting back the rest of the game trying to, to play catch up. And so Trevor has uh, kind of got that nightmare scenario now for a, a starting pitcher. He has to be absolutely dead perfect now the rest of this ball game while he's in there. He only got one out still has a runner in scoring position this inning. Seventh man to hit Greg Garcia. Takes ball one. here in the first. Seeing the second baseman Greg Garcia. 
Colton Wong sits tonight. See, he doesn't give in. A 2 0 pitch. Savelli sitting right on the corner. Went right for it. And he got it. Got us a strike. Now it's 2 and 1. But you know, some guys, they fall behind, this, especially the ending like this, and they would just try to throw a strike. But Trevor's always trying to make his pitch. Harrison now for the second out. One goes to third. Four-nothing lead, a two-run double for Munoz. Intentional walk issued to Francisco Pena. They face Jack Flaherty, who's one for eight. Herbal wanted to make sure that the message, the intentional pass. For third, the double for Munoz. First and second base open. They walk Francisco Pena. Runners at the corners now for Flaherty. to the plate four in Dairy broadcast in the history of baseball, most certainly a legend here in the city of St. Louis. I'm Robbie Insmikowski, and I'm hanging out under the press box here at Butch Stadium. And above me, many of the media legends in the city of St. Louis applied their craft right here. And just a couple hours ago, we had one of our own legends at AT&T Sports that become a permanent member of the press box at PNC Park. I am talking about the one and only Stan Saverin. He was just inducted hours ago, added to the Pirates Media Wall of Fame in a ceremony that took place at PNC Park. Stan began broadcasting in Pittsburgh in 1976 in both TV and radio and has been going strong ever since. He was added along with former Pittsburgh newspaper writer Bob Samizek, who was hired by the Pittsburgh Press in 1969. Now, the Pirates Media Wall of Fame is displayed in the press box in PNC Park. It was created back in 1989 and includes people like the gunner, Bob Prince, Art McKinnon, who was the PA announcer at Forbes Field and also Three River Stadium, among many, many others. Sally O'Leary worked in the Pirates Public Relations Department for four decades, so a big congratulations go out to our own Stan Saverin. Greg and Bob, how about that? Great stuff. Glad to see them uh, bring that back. It has uh, kind of been idle for a while. Uh, Pirates Wall of Fame. And there's a tweet from uh, Jamie Baker, who works down at Steubenville. Uh, WTOV is a kid, grew up watching Stan. 
As an adult lucky enough to call him a friend, gets added to the Pirates Hall of Wall of Fame. No more deserving than uh, Stan Savin. Congratulations and proud, certainly. Stan the man and Bob Smizek. I think Gene Collier uh, of the Post Gazette wrote a column about it. And uh, pretty classy on the part of the Pirates to honor a couple of uh, people who uh, over the years have not been afraid to be critical of the Pirates. But I think everyone who knows Stan and Bob and who've listened, watched, and read Smizek and Savern would absolutely say they may have been critical, but they were always fair. A lot of things that they said about the Pirates uh, might not have agreed with, but certainly thought-provoking and fair. Yeah, well-deserved. Uh, certainly uh, icons of the yep. Pittsburgh sports scene. And, uh, maybe maybe long time in coming. <laughs> you know, that, as you said, they've been a little idle of late. They, uh, they deserve uh, you know, all the accolades they could get. Wall on the media press room, Pally, Charlie Feeney, who is a longtime Pittsburgh Post Gazette writer, covered the Pirates. 1966 to 1986. Corey Dickerson tries to get on board here. Down four, three, one count on Dickerson. Mentioned Sally O'Leary, did Robbie. It was an important part of the Pirates Public Relations Department for years. And Corey Dickerson, an opposite field base hit off Flaherty. 61st hit this season for Doc Dickerson, and he's in the top 10 in the hits department. Came in batting 10th in the National League. Four Point Park University tweets from another legend. Longtime radio man in Western PA, George Von Benko, catching up with a couple of friends and colleagues. Josh Haas, a picture from the uh, ceremony today down in the Lexus Club. We talked to uh, Steve Blass on the phone today. Steve was uh, coming back from that ceremony and just said it was so well done. You saw a photo there of Stan and Bob and alongside Frank Coonley, the team president, who was the MC. Martinez will get an out there, and they almost pull off a double play. Moran reaches on the force at second base. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, they, they they like that around the horn double play. It's very difficult. This one here to me is the, the most uh, difficult. You know, it takes a real good first throw by the first baseman to get it over there, and then you know you're, you're trying to hit that uh, that first baseman sometimes on the run if they're a little late getting over there. With shortstop always risking that error if <laughs> the pitcher doesn't do his job. When it works, it looks nice, but that time did not work. All unable to beat him. High throw from uh, Munoz. So now Gregory Polanco. It's always a really, a, a, I thought, a kind of a scary play for the pitcher. You're getting over there, you're looking for the bag, you get your foot on it, and now you start to turn your head to look for the throw. And you know, it's like, uh, I guess, like an NFL receiver. Sometimes the ball's on the way, and you're afraid you're going to wear it right in your jaw. 99.9% .9 of the time, the shortstop's taking it easy on you, and he's making sure you're, you're turning your head as he's throwing the ball so you can pick it up in time. But there's always that doubt in the back of your mind as you're looking towards second base. Has he already thrown it? Polanco tries to snap out of the longest hitless streak of his career, 0 for 22. Clint Hurdle after the game was quick to praise Polanco and the sacrifice fly he hit in the second. Gave the Pirates the 2-1 lead after Corey Dickerson let off that inning with a triple.
two hits in 25 season at bats against the Redbirds. Austin Meadows. A rare hitless game for him though he did walk twice. He's not in the lineup tonight. The Pirates showing just tremendous patience with Gregory Polanco. It would be some would say easy to either sit him or send him to the minor leagues and throw Meadows in there but they don't want to do that with Polanco. Ripped foul. Well, the way it's been since Marte came back is it's a true four man rotation that somebody kind of resting and getting the night off of those four guys every night. But uh, you don't have three starting outfielders you get four now. And That's what they said that Neil Huntington said it's not a fourth outfielder situation talking about Meadows it's four outfielders it's like a team going to a six man starting rotation kind of similar feel to it. Seven pitches here to Polanco. It's Jack Flaherty on Saturday. Polanco was officially 0 for 1 against this right hander, drew a walk, and then bounced into a double play. The two plate appearances against Flaherty last Saturday. Extended at bat now. He's gotten it to three and two. And Do you notice how they're trying to stay away from I was just going to ask you that. But uh, that's very unusual to see opposing pitcher go the I, other way against Polanco. You know what, though? I think we've been seeing that a little bit more of late. Well, that the, uh, the now they're rather yeah, than they're pounding him in, they're going so away. Pound him in all the time. That, so they're starting to see that he's made adjustments and he's been hitting the ball hard, maybe. And now it looks like they're going to come in. Got that one in there. Broke the bat. Well, Bob, with all these uh, analytics, these statistics, uh, last Sunday, Neil Huntington, we asked him about the Polanco thing. He said it's hard for people to understand, but we do see internally uh, things starting to turn around for him. And so that means, you know, you know, maybe not raw numbers, but inside data will, would show that maybe he's hitting the ball hard inside. And you wonder, is that what other teams start to see? And now they counter. I mean, it's just a constant cat and mouse game. And hit hard into right. How about that's a pretty good at bat for Polanco. And that ball was away. <laughs> he fouled that pitch in to stay alive, in off the plate, and then they come back away and he singles to right. You know, sometimes they, you have a pitcher that just doesn't feel comfortable throwing the ball to no. a certain spot. And, you know, right here, uh, Flaherty is just everything away, 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 away. The time he did come in, it Black and Deckard the bat, <laughs> but for some reason decided to go back away, and he paid for it. Blanco hits it sharply through the hole. Well, now base hit can get the Bucks a run. It's Mercer. Had to feel good for Polanco after his uh, 0 for 22. It's off the Schneid. That long at bat. Flaherty now in front on Mercer. With the pitcher on deck. Twenty two years old Jack Flaherty there's a Trevor Williams getting up the four runs in the bottom of the first gets away right off the mitt of the catcher Francisco Pena Moran to third Polanco to second now a base hit you can cut it in half. 
Well, that's what you're hoping, you know, when you fall behind like this, is you get some opportunities that one hit can score multiple runs. Well, here it is. Gotta get that hit. Pass ball charged to Pena. And a little softy into left field for a base hit. Polanco will be held up. And the Pirates are on the board. It's 4 1. I reached out to kind of chase one off the plate and down and made it work, got a hit out of it. But this is what you have to do when you're the number eight hitter. The pitcher's on deck. You get two guys in scoring position. There's one out. I mean, you can't just. You know, take a walk and pass the bat to the baton to the pitcher to try to knock in the runs. You got to expand your strike zone a little bit. And that's exactly what Mercer did. It's good, you know, situational hitting, old time situational hitting right there. And you see, Polanco was well off the bag. He read it well, but Bader got to it quickly. Now Williams tries to advance at least that runner to second. Long instructions to Polanco, Tamara Barti, over first. Pushes it toward first and foul. He's two for 19 at the plate. Pirates making Flaherty work this inning. Be very interesting if Trevor would bunt the ball to third here, especially since Carpenter has one of the weakest arms of any third yeah. baseman in baseball. Yeah, well, Polanco well, well, at third. What, what would they do? What would he do with it once he picked it up? If he throws it somewhere. Polanco is probably going to score. You see, he's thinking about pushing it toward first. Well, that's what you'd normally do when you're trying to bunt a guy to second base. You bunt it to first. But when there's somebody in third, that changes the equation a little bit. Well, especially you got Carpenter. Given the idea what you said, yeah. Carpenter, you Polanco. Got, you got good speed. I mean, if you bunt this ball and make Carpenter come in and field it, if he throws it to a base, Polanco's going to score. And he gets it down. Flaherty will go to the second baseman Garcia covering sacrifice moves Mercer. Two in scoring position for Harrison now. Jordy Mercer driving in Moran. He began the game with a base hit to left went to second on an Aaron pickoff try. But was stranded. Never know how the game is going to go, but this could be one of the most, well, the most important at bat of the night for the Pirates, depending on what happens here. Get two runs here, put a three spot up. The answer be huge. Ball one. Jay Hay. Get that slider of Flaherty's very hard that first time up. Was able to say no to that fastball down and away. Different situation that Mercer was in. This is where Jay Hay really needs to be careful and not get himself out. Make sure he gets a good hit because look who's on deck. The layoff pitches off the plate. You got Cervelli on deck who's uh, been the best two out RBI guy in the league this year. And you would love to see him come up with two outs and the bases loaded. So if he doesn't want to throw you a strike, fine. Take your base. Pops it up. That goes sailing out of the hands. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's literally getting the bat knocked out of your hands. <laughs> Shocked that that bat left the hands. And he goes down swinging. And the Pirates leave a couple to get one. did something really cool as part of his Project 34 initiative. He hosted five-year-old Nolan Knockreiner and his family at PNC Park. They were on the field, as you can see, before the game and also got a behind-the-scenes tour from the Bucks pitcher. Trevor also put them in a suite for the game and had bags full of Pirates gear waiting for them. Now, Trevor also plans to visit Nolan at his next rehab appointment. So it seems like he made himself a new pretty good buddy. And it was Nolan's father, Eric, who tweeted a photo of the family when they were at the ballpark this past November, and Trevor saw it. He went out to the Pirates, reached out to them, and asked if he could host the family at a game, and truly was a day to remember Greg and Bob. And Project 34, and I'm paraphrasing of what the mission is of Project 34, it's to help with secondary care for people who have suffered spinal cord injuries. One of Trevor's best friends in college at Arizona State, Corey Hahn, suffered, uh, he was paralyzed sliding into second base, and is. um, confined to a wheelchair and Trevor's trying to help families of those affected with extra wheelchairs and other types of things with the money raised through Project 34. So it's a really good thing that they're doing and a really nice thing he did for Nolan on Sunday. He is a great human being. Uh, those who have met Trevor Williams, the tweet afterward that he sent out meeting Nolan and his family. Hashtag Project 34. Fight like Nolan. Hashtag fight like Nolan. They love it when the, you know, the young guys, they, they come up and, and right away, and they don't wait to get involved in the community, and that's exactly what Trevor has done. Doing for others. A lead-off single by yeah. the red-hot Matt Carpenter. By the way, they did try to change something different with Carpenter this time, same result. Instead of just going fastball down and away, they went breaking ball looked like maybe they tried to throw a slider tried to run it in on him but left it out over the plate a little bit lined it in right field this is how the bottom of the first began with a base hit by Carpenter Harrison Bader then followed lining a ball to left This one up, foul territory, Josh Bell. Sets down Bader. 
face Tommy Pham. Graciously funded in the air back to Williams. One of the things that went right in that first inning for Williams. And a real easy free out there. And tried to run for a base hit. Easy little pop fly right to the mound. Strike on Tommy Pham. Pirates trailing 4 1. Williams knows he needs to put up a zero now. At least his club scratched out one. He has to pitch every inning now, like it's the sixth, seventh inning. Back door cutter. <laughs> cutter. Go to my pie chart. Is that on the pie chart? I don't know. I don't believe it is. I'm going to have to look. Now they go with a high fastball and Pham doesn't chase. Williams does not get a lot of strikeouts. That had to be a fastball that just naturally, naturally cut for whatever reason. According to my pie chart. Oh, it does not get that call. Same pitch. That's the one I was trying to find. Not the one earlier, that three, not the five. Fifth pitch, so it goes to three and two on Tommy Pham. Fastball. Five wins, three losses for Williams facing Tommy Pham. Pirates have kept him in check much of this season. This is, again is the third series between these two clubs. So Harrison will get the out at first for the second out. Brings Jose Martinez to the plate. Students can sign up for the Pirates Papa John Student Pass. Get exclusive ticket offers throughout the season. Get a text when a deal is available and if you accept the tickets are sent via your mobile device. Plus get a free Papa John's pizza when you make your first purchase. Sign up at pirates.com slash student pass or Text code student to 61592. That's student to 61592. Do it right now. Brief road trip here. Pirates are back home against the Dodgers for a brief homestand. Next Tuesday, Wednesday nights, and Thursday afternoon at 12:35 matinee game. Good possibility that uh, they haven't announced it, but that Clayton Kershaw would pitch. That Tuesday night game. We'll see. The defending National League champs coming in. 0 1 on Martinez. Another borderline he didn't get. Starts of the season. Those starts in April, including a victory against the Cardinals at PMC Park on April the 28th, but he's won just one time 
this month. Here we are the final day of May. He'd love to finish off with a W, but he's got a lot of work to do. 2 1 count. A broken bat bouncer to Mercer. And he does put up the zero. Pirates go back to work against Jack Flaherty down three. Friday Night Rocks get tuned into Pittsburgh's music scene, showcasing local artists and tracks throughout every Friday Night Pirates broadcast. Spinning Jenny will be our featured performer tomorrow night. Bucks Cardinals. Friday Night Rocks presented by Iron City Beer. Two of the series here in St. Louis. And Cardinals Nation. Bucks and Cardinals played so many of these games over the last handful of years have been tight nip and tuck games. So even though right now and it was four nothing now four to one. Most always feel like it's uh, going to get tighter as the game goes on and uh, Cervelli again not happy. Well you know he's been catching a couple pitches back there that He's not getting called strikes when he's got the glove on and now he's yeah now he's saying get in the box and Cervelli's saying I'll, I'll get back in there when I'm ready. You know there's a borderline pitch and now it's a strike it's uh, Cervelli's a little frustrated right now because there's strikes when I got a bat in my hand their balls when yeah. I got the glove in my hand what, what is it. That's a great shot there. That pitch it was called a strike. Now he's in the hole 0 and 2 rather than one ball one strike again it's James Hoy behind the plate Quinn Wolcott the first base umpire the crew chief is Jeff Kellogg. He's at second Marvin Hudson at third. Jeff Kellogg the crew chief. O2 count on Cervelli. Cervelli calling time. <laughs> and I don't. This is his relationship is not going very well between Cervelli and Oi. <laughs> it's got off to a bad start yeah, from the first so. pitch <laughs> when he was at the plate. <laughs> well, Francisco does get into the box a little on the slow side. It reminds me like you know how the sumo wrestlers get ready they have one foot in they swing the other <laughs> foot it. in. You know? We're gonna have to do a split screen or something one of these nights. I mean, that's how he gets in there most of the time. Oh boy. Yeah, look how borderline that is. Well I didn't say a word no. but that's right on the edge. And he wants that same pitch when he's catching. Starling Marte. You hardly ever see him without a smile. He's not yeah. smiling now. Not happy.
Flaherty was able to get Marte to bounce out of the first. He tries to bunt for a hit. Well, one of these uh, bullpens, National League. Want to try to avoid, but recently the Cardinals have had their struggles with their relievers. So working here against Flaherty. Another timeout called by a pirate hitter. game sometimes gets played by the pitcher the hitters but who's got to wait on who I, I know that sounds kind of silly and it is silly but it does go on gamesmanship huh yeah, yeah if they start calling time on you that all of a sudden it takes you forever it seems like to get the sign for some reason oh wait a minute I need to go to the Raza bag Goes back and forth. You want me to wait? I'm going to make you wait longer. Hey, all over the place from those pitches, and he strikes out Marte. Yeah, definitely chased one way inside. That's Marte really worried about that slider. He saw a poor swing at it earlier in the at bat. I mean, that's the only reason why you would chase a fastball that's literally only. Eight nine inches uh, away from your body, not going to hit that ball. What do you think? But the your thumbs. But you think it might break out over the place so you start the bat. He struck out Bell looking in the first. Struck out back to back hitters here in the third inning, and he's got five so far in the ball game. Did he, what did it hit? Foul no ball, but it might have hit it. Hand or a wrist. Got the bat. Did hit the bat. I think he called the foul. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it sounded like it might have hit. I said, or it looked like it could have hit a hand, it hit the bat. Two and two. Pirates team does not strike out much, but I said Larry has he struck out three in a row and five so far in the night. And has struck out the fewest times in the league. The Pirates through two months. Team batting average of 257 is fourth highest in the senior circuit. Well, he thrived early in that cold weather when everyone else was having such a hard time with him. He's going to be out of play. I think you're going to take a look. They're still up there in slugging. As well. Pirates have the third highest slugging percentage in the league. Jeff Livesey is the hitting coach tonight, uh, normally the assistant for Jeff Branson. But uh, Jeff Branson, Bob, you told us, is away for uh, one of his kids' graduation. Two tonight? and two. Still two balls, two strikes. That time of year. Larry Sutton, who's a minor league hitting coordinator, is now with the club for this series. So it's still a 2 2 count on Bell. Mentioned that slugging percentage, third in the National League for the Pirates. The Cardinals pitchers don't give up home runs. And that combination is interesting. Pirates team up there in slugging. The Cardinals have given up the fewest homers in the league. Flaherty's allowed only three. 
And one of them we mentioned was to Starling Marte, his last start on Saturday. And again, look at those pitches all over. Bouncer to Martinez. After all that, it's a 1 2 3, top of the third, a 4 1. St. Louis lead. Bush. Popcorn. That's good. It sounded like you might have been a vendor at one point in your life, back here. Uh, Bob. I've done a little of everything. Yeah. Vending. The way you just said popcorn. Popcorn here. Yeah. You got it. You got the cadence. I'm not sure about that enthusiasm. They didn't, they didn't sell that. Popcorn, popcorn would be good. It's not that heavy. Easy to carry. Yeah. yeah, I think popcorn would be a good one. And everybody loves popcorn. <laughs> what about the cotton candy? It's sticky. Not for you. It's in a bag. Yeah, he's still, uh, it's just, you know what's there. You got bees flying around you. Bees flying around you? Yeah, you're going after that sticky cotton candy. Look at that. There's no mess there at all. It's light. No bees everybody flying around. Everybody loves it. There's no bees. Yeah. I don't, you know me and bees. We don't get along no, no. all the time. Yellow jackets. This one. Those are the main ones I don't like. Fowler with a fly ball. Here we got a man there. Yeah, Marte. Well, Williams gave up the four in the first, nine men to the plate. And it was a key. Two run double by this man, the rookie Chairo Munoz. Following the uh, Dexter Fowler base hit that brought in a pair. You never like to face a guy that's wearing the same number you are. Always gives them a little advantage. Hitter, no, it always gives hitter always the, has an advantage in this situation. He has the same number as the pitcher. The hitter has the advantage. And again, this is something that not heard before. Always. Well, I thought that was a fact. No. So what other? I'm trying he's to. Be, he's got to be careful. Doesn't mean they're going to get hit every time. But you saw last time he hit the double. Not 
to uh, maybe ask Jason Steele to look up some okay, uh, number 17. Great. So I'll look up Grace. Mark Grace. Okay. Look that up. Good career numbers against you. I don't know, but I'll bet you they are. It was the same number, so I, I, I have to be Larry at pitching against him. Cervelli and uh, James like Murray, by the way, are still have to watch. Well, you know, a little bit. Are they still? I think so. Still having issues. Oh, look at here again. Oh, oh line that's about ball. where his pit. Yeah. See? Yeah, just next to it, you can yeah. see that our strike zone lights up. Yeah. That means the computer says it was a strike. Mark Grace did, I'm not going to say the number, but he hit, he did hit you. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Let's look at some others. Other 17s. No, 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 no. no. Let's talk about another another 17. Think about another. I, I, I think I another 17. I don't. That's the only one I can remember. Somebody that played all the time. The one 17. How about uh, maybe you can help us? Hashtag Bucks Booth. Look at this bunt. Perfecta. A two-out bunt hit for Garcia. Now normally uh, you're you're going to give up the the two-out signal. You, you're not going to play up tight and take that away from them. With two outs, you're more afraid of somebody getting an extra base hit. So they lay one down like that. It's Just move on. Yep. Here's a 17. Lee Lacey. The Pirates. Before you wore it, and when you were pitching against the Pirates, hashtag Bucks Booth. If you uh, want to pass along any 17s, because Bob wore 17, and we need your help. Or maybe, better yet, for those who watched the Pirates over the years, have more fun with us. Tell us what hitters Bob owned. Uh -huh. None. Hashtag Bucks Booth. None. But uh, let's get back to my point. It's it's not about. It's about like, the numbers. Like like Flaherty right now. He's got a 30. What did you say? Like what? Flaherty. Like, oh no, you didn't say it like that before. <laughs> like who? Uh, however I said it. <laughs> he wears a 32. Now if he was hitting off Steve Carlton, he probably wouldn't do. Oh very yeah, well. that's a good point. See? Yeah. He wouldn't do very oh, no, well. No, no, I got that Wait backwards. Wait a second. I got that backwards. No. You said the Carlton hitter has the advantage. To, Carlton would have to be aware of Flaherty. You have to be aware. Be aware. Be aware. By the way, Lee Lacey was 0 for 1 against you. Yeah. It was a platoon situation. I wouldn't have him. High fastball against Francisco Pena. So just a bunt hit against Williams. And holding the fort 4 1 through 3. It's time for the Toyota all-wheel drive RAV4 thinning. Toyota, what drives you? 
We're back at score one onto the fourth inning here in St. Louis and Corey Dickerson will be leading things off. Cardinals scored four sent nine to the plate and now it's comeback time for Pittsburgh that one run in the second on the RBI hit by Jordy Mercer. It'll be Dickerson Moran and Polanco here in the fourth and during the break uh, Steel Town looked up some notable hitters who struggled against Bob Walk. Uh, Ken Griffey Senior 0 for 16. And then this is regardless of what uniform number they wore. Sammy Sosa just one for 16 against you. How about that? And and the one time longtime Cardinal Ray Langford 0 for 13. Well, I had to get Sosa out because Grace, Grace was, was a, a yeah. <laughs> had to get somebody out. Matt Williams one for 16 against you. Jimmy Davis one for 14. One of those guys had to wear number 17. We got to no, debunk no, no. this Bob theory. No, 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 you can't bunk it. I, I told you how to really test it. All the good hitters wore 24. So you find pitchers that wore 24, and I bet you that their oh yeah their ERA is going to be higher than the major league average. That's, a, that's an excellent point, Bob. There you go. That's he tested right there. Yeah. Let's see. 24 Mays, Bonds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> check out the pictures yeah. of our 24. <laughs> While you're at it, hashtag Bucks Booth. There's uh, the current Pirate 17, Austin Meadows, off to a fabulous start. But while we're at it, hashtag Bucks Booth, maybe you can pass along your favorite number and why. Whether you played, at any level or currently playing whether it's little league high school college maybe a softball team what jersey number are you wearing and why or maybe you never played just like a certain number your favorite player wore it or currently wears it and to center field a base hit for Corey Dickerson he's now two for two. There's a lot of people that are liking 59 now, I think. Joe Musgrove. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's take a look. How did uh, Bob do against Keith Hernandez? That's a good I'm question. 17. Yeah, I couldn't get him out. I could not get Hernandez out. Chris Sabo, David hit Cohn. A, Sabo hit a key home run off me in the playoffs. It's just, uh, just go on and on. Did the chair in the booth wear 17? Because it. <laughs> Own Bob Walk. That's an excellent point. Now there's a great 17 right there, Dizzy Dean. Yeah. I think that might be the only seven. It's, it, Dean's in the Hall of Fame, right? Yep. I think it's the only 17 that's in the Hall of Fame. Well, that's an interesting trivia question. What makes you say that? It just sounds like a good thing to say. And, and, and <laughs> the days, the, the, it sounds like the, a good thing to say. Well, in the days before these little things there I got in my hand you know you could say stuff nobody could fact check you know somebody will probably look that up and see if I'm right. Well no you had to you don't just <laughs> say that without some knowledge of it. You, you, know, you know I think he's the only 17 in the Hall of Fame. I don't know I just throw it out there. Yeah. Yeah. Colin Moran after the leadoff hit. Last time he bounced to Jose Martinez. Two balls, one strike. Under that one. High pop. That was right on the head of the bat. Just there a little bit, but he hit it out on the screws. Moran is retired for a second time. Bob owned Sean Dunstan. According to Shiz Mike Bell, we're going to check it out. Dunstan. Seven for 32. Good work. Kevin Bass. 
Ooh, Kevin Bass. That's a hit only 250 against you. So we are again. Thank you. We're debunking his theory. No, you're not debunking. Yeah, we are. Oh. Hashtag Bucks Booth. A little help. That's all we need. Could have been a hard. Now Keith Hernandez. He he did good work against yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. But he did good work against most. <laughs> Right-handed like, pitchers, like saying Pete yeah, Rose, like Pete Rose yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> good. Former Cardinal and Met, Pete Hernandez, who was the co-MVP in 1979 with Willie Stargell. He could play some D too. Boy, boy, he was a fantastic first baseman. Best defensive first baseman in your time, would you say? Uh, yeah. You'd have to. I mean, I'd like to see somebody better. Cut. Not only just you know catching the balls and doing all that stuff around first base, but a phenomenal on you know bunt plays, incredibly aggressive. A long at bat for Polanco in the second. He finally singled to right, and that snapped an 0 for 22 hitless string in the hole 0 and 1 here to Flaherty, and fairly close Dickerson. Will dive back safely. Larry had a, an air charge to him in the very first inning. And Josh Harrison at first wound up at second with nobody out. Pirates couldn't move him from scoring position. See how Flaherty pitches to Polanco here. Ball, one strike, Mercer on deck. Tigers trying to grind this out. As Clint Hurdle has said in the past, they've had some great, already thrilling comebacks this season. 14 come from behind victories. And they've talked about when they get behind early to slow it down, no hurry. Concentrate pitch by pitch, and you can see them doing it here. Inside, three and one. I'd love to see Polanco get a pitch. He can drive, but again, Flaherty, the Cardinals, they just they don't give up home runs. The pitching yeah, staff. Really, that slow it down is kind of an, it's an old school approach. That, you know, for. Forever, it's like. In fact, guys used to take it so far as once you got down by three or four, you'd always have to take a strike. Boy, look at this shot into the right center field gap. This is going to score. Dickerson Polanco will pull up at second with an RBI double. He is two for two, and the Pirates are within two, slowing it down. That was another uh, down and away pitch. Polanco hey, hit that. At the same location, he hit it hard last time for a base hit, and now it gives it a ride right up into the gap. I know you talked to Jeff Branson at length yesterday about some of the hitters, including Polanco, and what they've been trying to do with him. Yeah, the, the thing that recently that they've been trying to do is keep him off the, uh, the field of play during batting practice. The, the, you know, too much stuff. Well, Seeing a 50 mile an hour fastball and, that and all day to hit it into the river is not really, it almost makes the long swing, the swing worse. So they've been taking him off the field and putting him in the batting cage and cranking up the, uh, the pitching machine to give him game like velocity uh, to try, because then if, if that much pitching machine is like throwing a ball right on top of you and you're, you're having to be quick then, you're having to cut down your swing to get to that pitch. So. That's what they've been trying to do of late, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll pay off. That's a that's a bat that we talk about all the time, year after year. That uh, it, it would be just wonderful for this offense if it was, you know, consistent and hammering the baseball. And that's where you really look to to have power. I mean, he's the big, strong guy up there that could possibly be a true power hitter on this team. Well, he drove in a run with a sacrifice fly in the second inning last night, and. You know those RBIs for Polanco. How important are they? The Bucks are 14 and one this season when he drives in at least a run, and he just did drive in Dickerson. 
And it's 0 2 now on Mercer. Mercer, the RBI single in the second. One ball, two strikes. Ball, two strikes. And it pops it up. And let's go back to the studio for a game break and Rob King. All right, Rob, thanks. And this ball hit in the air to shallow left field, but it's going to hold up long enough for Bader, so Williams is retired for the final out. Bucks get one. RBI double by Polanco. It's 4-2. They've chipped away to make it 4 2 here as we hit the bottom half of inning number four. Well, the Pirates announced today that third baseman Jung Ho Gung back in Korea been training at the Pirates Spring Training Facility in Bradenton, Florida, announced that he will play in his first minor league baseball game tomorrow for the Bradenton Marauders. And earlier today, manager Clint Hurdle gave an update on his progress. The challenge has been playing shape as far as com competition shape. All the time away, you can work out in the gym, you can take ground balls by yourself. There's no game. There's no at bats. There's no back to back play. There's no any of that. So that part was the most challenging part for him initially, just getting back in the, in the level of competition. And you can't play every day to do it to build up endurance. You've got to play a day. Then he played a couple back to back days. There's a time set where he played three days in a row. Um, we don't have a, uh, a hard line on how many games he's going to play in Bradenton. However, we get people that are going to monitor him. The swing's gotten better. So they will take on the Charlotte Stone Crabs at Lee Com Park tomorrow. It's the first game action that Gung has seen Greg and Bob in the United States since October 2nd, 2016. And that was right here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis when the season ended. Now he has been playing in extended spring training games since being granted his visa to re-enter the United States last month. So we'll see how this goes. Certainly there's no date set for a return or at least even a time frame set for his return to the big league club. But we're hoping it's some point in time this season. And Robbie Jack Flaherty. 
leads things off here in the bottom of the fourth against Williams. And in fact, it was uh, Clint Hurdle himself who yesterday on MLB Network Radio announced that uh, Gong was going to be heading to Bradenton on Friday. And Pirates manager was asked about Gong. And Clint Hurdle said that extended spring in Bradenton, he had about 30 at bats. His average was climbing to about 200, but as he just told Robbie and others, he's getting better. And, uh, he also said that uh, yeah, he'll be going to Florida State League and play for the Marauders starting on Friday and eventually to Indianapolis. Triple A Indianapolis. Uh, it'll be that much closer, but uh, no timetable for that. Three and two on the pitcher. Clarity. How's that pitch away from Williams? Working hard tonight is Trevor Williams after that extremely laborious first frame. He finally strikes out Clarity. Pirates offer ticket values to get you to PNC Park this season with special discounts. Giant Eagle Advantage card, one way to save. Use your card to save up to 10 bucks on seats throughout the ballpark for all Sunday through Friday games. So save on Bucko tickets at PNC Park. Go to pirates.com slash advantage card. And we want to keep reminding you that the Pirates are home for just three starting on Tuesday night against the Los Angeles Dodgers and then on the road for another week. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and a Thursday afternoon matinee game. We heard Rob King talk about Clayton Kershaw pitching tonight and if they uh, keep him on every five days he would pitch Tuesday otherwise he'll pitch Wednesday against the Bucks. Just off the disabled list. Matt Carpenter is two for two. Now he questions Hoy. Can't win with it. up hard. Every time a close pitch one of those guys is not going to like the call. Single to left in the first, single to right in the second. Spoils pitches. He is just in a groove right now, Matt Carpenter. over toward left and finally Dickerson is there way up in the air and that shift Alan Moran had a long way to go Corey Dickerson gets to it Yeah, they both had a ways to run get that one but thank goodness it was very very high you just challenge him with a fastball in the center square that's how you get him out <laughs> yeah, right, there it is right down the pipe <laughs> Dickerson has done such a fine job on defense. Two outs. Harrison Bader takes the strike. I wonder what Dickerson thinks about. Being able to play the field every day and not being shuffled off into the DH spot all the time. Well, I don't know the specific answer, but I, I, mean, oh, I can't quote directly. But I know it. he loves it. <laughs> he, uh, he, he, he the loves way, the way he defense. plays, you got to think that he's just enjoying the heck out of it, being a a full-time baseball player again. 
We talked to him early on about it that playing well, well, half the time in the left field at Tampa Bay last couple years. Uh, a lot of DH work, but really, of course, enjoys being, as you'd like to say, a, a full time baseball player. Rather than just a DH. Long way to run 131 feet according to Statcast to get that ball and this ball bounced to Moran and on the first not going to get the speedy Harrison Bader. Well, Moran had this to do over he would come and get this ball try and get a short hop but he laid back on it to get a nice long hop and that cost him. He's just waiting waiting and he did he got a beautiful head high hop but the, the time it took for the ball to get to him Tossing the chance at the out. If he breaks in right away, he might be able to get to that ball, or at least close enough to where he'd have, have a short hop. Well, now, Tommy Pham. with five steals and seven tries. He and Tommy Pham are the only ones really in the lineup that even attempt to run. So the great speed that Bader has, so no surprise. If he tries to swipe a bag, get into scoring position here. Two outs. Thank you. Have the green light. It's a jump. Hi. Williams has done a great job in that department this year. Three attempts against him, and opponents are 0 for 3. Steal attempts with Williams on the mound. Job Musgrove did yesterday. Not only, of course, all the attention on the slide, but first and foremost, the seven strong innings. So he's gone 14 innings his first two Pirate starts, one run. But uh, the other parts of his game, fielding the position, the, the hitting, the play. Uh, yeah, the, the pickoff at second, uh, the, the, obviously the running. And there goes Bader. He's going to get there easily. Clutch by Cervelli and didn't have a chance. I, anyway. I wasn't looking at his second base. I was watching Cervelli. Did he double clutch because there was no one to throw I, the ball to? I was to looking him? at Cervelli also. It was almost like there was no one to throw to, like a delay steal. But I, I don't know. Maybe he just didn't have a grip on the ball. He, he doesn't throw from his knees very often. That was kind of unusual also. It's not a, just had a, had the grip that he wanted. 2 1 count. Oh. Evens things up here now against Pham. Dave Way on that breaking ball. He throws so many fastballs at the, the breaking pitch. Uh, to definitely be a little surprised, I would imagine, when you're hitting. See fastball after fastball. Again, borderline. No strike called. It's three and two. Another at the edge of the knees. Gets him swinging. Trevor Williams. Gave up those four in the first, and he is really battling now. Down a pair.
AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. Visit Barrel.com to learn more about our three conveniently located collision centers. And by Allegheny Health Network, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates and fans like you. Let's go Bucks! Down a pair now, go to the fifth here in St. Louis. First of a four-game series with the Cardinals. Third time around against Jack Flaherty, and here is Josh Harrison. Last time up, he really chased with two men on. Left the strike zone, frustrated with himself. First time up, singled. And toward left, Bader. One away. He had a 1 2 3 third. He's had to work from the stretch. In the other three innings. Starters have had to step up with the injuries. Talked about Alex Reyes. Off the DL yesterday to pitch four innings and then wound up on the DL again today. Adam Wainwright's been on the disabled list. Yeah, well they kind of link to this inning. Getting up pushing on pitches yeah. there through five innings. Gotta work on that bullpen. Maybe get into that bullpen for the last four. It's Wayne Wright. Carlos Martinez is scheduled to make an injury rehab start tonight at double A. A couple of long at bats here. Well, Cervelli has struck out twice, once swinging, once looking. Let's see what this third AB has to offer. Yadier Molina. Will be working his way back. Heart and soul of this Cardinals team. Pirates catcher in the hole. Got him. Did that hit him in the forearm or he's oh, he's mad been, about been it. Hit a couple of times in that forearm, hasn't he? Yeah. So he can scream toward uh, Flaherty in frustration. And the Pirates head trainer checking out Cervelli. Oh, he doesn't want to look at it. See how it's already a big red welt on there. Same spot he got hit, uh, what about a week yep, ago? Yep. yep it was the exact same spot. It's the eighth time he's been hit this season. That's the most on the club. Stay in frustrated because you can't imagine him that much hurt his a bullseye right for the same spot. A painful way to get on with one out. Well, Francisco Cervelli. Another look on the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. Chris Bryant of the Cubs has been hit nine times. Well, when, he, eight. when he got hit there uh, about a week ago, you could see it perfectly the, the nice line there of the, the thread, the seams of the baseball. I imagine there's something that, like that there now. Maybe the commissioner's name. <laughs> All one on Marte. Takes a strike. Talking about the, the pitch count for Flaherty. Now it, you see 92. He was taken out 
relatively early on Saturday. I mean, giving up just one run, that home run to Marte. Six innings on four hits, 88 pitches. That followed his 120 pitch outing here six days earlier against the Phillies. And Marte lifting one to right. Two down, it brings up Josh Bell, who has struck out and grounded out. Well, a couple weeks ago, Bob was talking about Cervelli getting hit by the pitch. And this is that spot right there at PNC Park. And, yep, and the seams. Tattooed on that forearm. Same, same thing right there. That's the Chicago White Sox. Billy hit by Ronaldo Lopez pitch. Bullpen is up for the Cardinals. A lefty throwing. And the lefty hitters to follow the switch hitter Bell. Dickerson Moran Polanco. Whoa. That might be a uh, warning sign. Breaking ball nowhere close. And is Tyler Lyons becomes a very important at bat now for Bell. If he reaches, you expect that would be it for Flaherty. Get to that bullpen. Twenty-nine pitch second inning. The Pirates scratch one run off of him. And had one of those, Harry. What you like is a couple of those little short innings. We High fly there. ball to right center field. Back is Martinez at the wall and clear the deck. Cannonball coming and ring your bell to tie it up. Josh Bell's home run, his fourth, makes it a 4 4 game in the fifth. That was a nice, majestic home run there. Way, way up there. Question was it going to be able to climb over that fence? Because it's so high. Fourth home run for Josh Bell ties the game. We were talking earlier about how difficult it has been for anybody to hit home runs off the Cardinals this year. For Flaherty, just the fourth given up. It didn't look like a, a real bad pitch. But it had a bad result for Flaherty. And hopefully we'll be seeing some more of that from Bell. Those long balls, the instant offense. Dickerson two for two as Matheny stays with Flaherty at least for another batter. Josh Bell. Just uh, his first home run since May the 11th against the Giants. Another look at Fowler. Extra Fowler going back, but just does clear the fence. 393 feet. Two and one. Feels like a typical uh, Cardinal Pirate game. Yeah. Look up the scoreboard. Four runs on seven hits. Four runs on seven hits. And now three and one. And, and frankly, a little bit surprising that Matheny lets Flaherty face even one more batter. See, uh, the Flaherty spot leading off next time. No. Shallow left. Now he's going to get him on a 3 1 pitch. He got Dickerson. He did not get Bell. A Bell ringer to tie it. Four at Bush.
enjoy a Miller Lite. Look forward to the whole true moment later in tonight's game. Josh Bell's home run ties it. Bucks trailed 4 0 in the first. Talked about uh, Trevor Williams holding the fourth. The Pirates continuing to battle, kind of slowing things down, make it their game, their pace. Here's Jose Martinez. Now, of course, just as critical for Williams to shut it down here in the fifth, facing the four, five, six men. Yeah, he's got a chance if he's somewhat efficient with his pitches. He's got another two innings in. Maybe get six innings and just leave the last three up to the bullpen. Bob, can a can an offense? Scoring a couple of runs. The Pirates, two in the top of this inning, one in the previous. Inning. Do anything for you on the mound. That really doesn't affect you, does it? Or Not, you know what, where it, it, it'll have an effect, I think, at least for me, was more if uh, probably that, that one run up in the second inning probably had as much of an effect as anything. You know, because that's when you're really feeling down, when you've just given up the big, the big inning. And now you guys come back. You start to feel a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, 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 that's when it's really, I think, a pickup for you. Now, in this scenario here, to be honest with you, Greg, uh, it would be like, oh, wow, they, they tied it up. You know, I, you still feel pressure now, <laughs> like you had the, the rest of the time. It's like, well, I can't blow it now. They, they look, my guys have come back for me. I think the pickup actually. I think comes a little earlier than that. So this becomes more of a pressure situation. Yeah, I think so. That's how I I would feel. I mean, maybe that's the way you shouldn't feel. You don't want to put pressure on yourself, but the runs coming later and getting you off the hook, and now you know your time is very limited out there. Maybe it's good it's like pressure. Don't mess it up. Yeah, maybe maybe it's good yeah. though. Talk about the you know, pitchers that discuss the. The adrenaline rush. We were just talking to uh, Kyle Crick earlier today about that very subject for relievers. And you just you can't starts, describe what the uh, adrenaline rush does for you. Starts with the ringing of the phone. You hear that phone ring. It's it's like that first sip of coffee in the morning <laughs> or something. It's, gets you going. It gets you going, and you, then you wait and you see is it going to be your name? You know, if you don't have a set role out there, that's the way you feel. Lines oh past Josh Bell not able to knock it down. Harams off that short fence. Polanco gets to it quickly but Fowler stands at second base with a one out double. Now that will get the, uh, the speaking of the phone the bullpen uh, at immediately it's like six guys stood up and started moving around out there in that bullpen. Like a little bit of a chance there for Bell to get a, a at least glove knock on it, it down. Got by him. He was expecting a higher hop, it looked like. Goes as a double. Well, Bell will tell you, definitely should have at least knocked that thing down. Ray Searage goes to the mound. This is a little bit of a, a you know a delay tactic here. He was a long time before he came out of the, the dugout I and mean, the phone just rang. So Rodriguez is uh, you know wanting a few pitches at least before uh, yeah, before Munoz gets to see him. So and also Ray's going out there to tell him and now be careful. This guy's got a 34 on his back. <laughs> just a reminder in case you didn't see it. Yeah. Remember he doubled off you in the first. Yeah, so this is a 34 34 combo. Yeah, you got to go to work here now. By the way some others who wore number 17. The Bob's theory again doesn't hold water. Chris Sabo was five for 16. Glenn Hubbard three for 16.
Mark Lemke 0 for 4. Okay, it didn't hold. It did work. Your theory did anyway against Ellis Valentine. He was five for eight against you. You know, it seems to me there's a theme in all this. The good 17s. <laughs> my theory worked out. Two and zero the count on Shiro Munoz with you know, no disrespect to the other guys, but yeah, Ellis Valentine, you'd figure probably was uh, five for eight. And then some against other pitchers in the National League. The great uh, Ellis Valentine, the former Montreal Expos right fielder. Oh, that big swing. How about the arm of Ellis Valentine? Oh, absolutely. Cannon from yeah. right. He can throw. You know, he may have been the first batter I ever faced. In my very first major league spring training, could have been Alice Valentine. I, I know it was the Expos, and I and I can remember running in the outfield and him turning around saying something to me, and I thought that was kind of cool. Now would they have been he coming to Clearwater? My appearance. <laughs> or were you guys out at was that West Palm? No, I think uh, I think that was at uh, um, at our place, Jack Russell. Okay. They must have been on a road trip. How about this? We used to take road trips in Florida back in those days. Bob against the Expos lineup. Probably uh, some good, some bad. Uh, that was a good team. Fly ball to the Pirates right fielder, Polanco. Now they're going to move up. He tried to almost deke uh, Polanco. Why? But at any rate, so fly ball, two outs, and Fowler at third, and the batter Greg Garcia. Not sure what this is all about. He's looking behind him to see if he had to run or not. Greg Garcia bunt hit in the third. Right handed hitting Francisco Pena is on deck. His dad of course played for both the Pirates and the Cardinals. And into center field, Marte not going to get there. Oh boy, that hurts. That's a big one. Well, a flare to, had to be off the end of the bat. Had no carry to it. No chance for Marte to catch it. That is a big two-out single to give them the lead back. Yep, off the end of the bat. Change up. So it looked like yeah, it. a high changeup. You hear it, hear it. Sound like the back. Up. Yeah. Well now, it's Francisco Pena. Pushing 100 pitches himself now. They're over 95. So no matter what happens, it's most likely be his last inning. He's going to hit 40. He ain't coming up anyway. Probably get pinch hit for him. Get some going. But will be pinch hit for him for sure. So Luke Voigt on deck to bat. For Flaherty. Well, Williams is 
still frustrated. You see his reaction after gave up that uh, hit to Garcia. And that's just kind of naturally. As I was talking about, there's a little bit of pressure in, in this inning for him. They've come back and tied the game, and not to, to give up anything. Even though it was a, just a little off the end of the bat flare, you, still a run, and you feel bad. Ground ball, the backhand play smooth from Colin Moran. That strong, accurate throw to get the out. Well, he does have an accurate arm, doesn't he? he? Really does. But the Cardinals take the lead again. It's 5-4. the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. UPMC scoreboard, the Cardinals up again 5-4. Trevor Williams back to the dugout. Putting up zeros since uh, that four spot in the first, but the Cardinals get a run. And now Tyler Lyons, the lefty. Tyler's numbers, he uh, obviously gives up a few hits. Doesn't stay out there long. Went to 12 innings, 20 games. All well, the partials are there. Came off the DL on Saturday. A right hander throwing in the Cardinal bullpen before he throws his first pitch. Might be out there just for two hitters. A little earlier in the game, they did for that kind of matching up. He does have two other lefties available, as uh, Matheny. Just called up a, another one from their minor leagues, made a bunch of moves today. Going back all the way to the La Russa days, the Cardinals have always been a team that love to play matchup with their bullpen. John Brebia up in the bullpen. Alan Moran looks for his first hit of the night. He was over two against Flaherty, who does go the minimum, mandatory five, and now has the lead, so he could get a W. But a shaky Cardinal bullpen. Popped up and maybe Pena with room. Just enough. He's 
Gregory Polanco against Lions. Polanco two for two with an RBI double. Need to score at least a run here, a couple runs to have Trevor Williams qualify. Well, at least one, get him off the hook. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be here for that. So you can get him a couple and get a win. Yeah. W out of it. He really did battle after giving up that four spot. One ball, one strike on Polanco. Wouldn't expected anything less from him. Nope. He's not going to ever throw in the towel, no matter what happens in that first inning. And he strikes out against the lefty. Make your next group outing the event of the year at PNC Park. Put together a group of 15 or more. Enjoy special discounts. Find out how you can get one of a kind experiences, including access onto the field at PNC Park. Or you can take home a Pirates cap. For more information, go to pirates.com slash groups. Double switch coming as Mike Matheny goes to the home plate umpire James Hoy. That will be it for Lions. Faces the two hitters, retires Moran and Polanco. on in the sixth part of this double switch. John's been 11 games, 16 innings, so he does stay out there a while. A couple of home runs, that'd be nice right now to make that a three spot. No strikes. Just three base on balls in his 16 innings of work. Colton Wong takes over at second as part of this double switch. Jordy Mercer now. And two outs and nobody on. And Austin Meadows out on deck. There's Colton Wong. That's in the ninth spot of the order, which is due up first in the bottom of this inning. Mercer is singled in the second, driving in the first Pirates run.
Francisco Cervelli had a bases loaded double off Brebbia last weekend. Space on player Quinn Wolcott, no swing. There's Meadows. Three and one. See if Meadows get a shot with the Mercer aboard. And two outs. Full count on the Pirates shortstop. I imagine when you want. When you, you want to play the Meadows card. You want it to be with somebody on base. Nice scenario to have him up there. Especially if you're to get on second, but we'll take first base. How's the walk? Just four walks now. I mean, have uh, done that very often. And here we go. Here he is, Austin Meadows. Second game since he's come up, but he's not started. Part of that uh, outfield rotation. He's had safely in eight of his first 11 major league starts. The eye popping numbers for Austin Meadows, an average of 419. 18 hits and 43 at bats with four homers. This is his second pinch hit appearance. of this month against the Padres went two for four in his very first game time is called just as Brebbia ready to deliver he sat in that stretch for a little while there. Stay in a stretch position that long, and not surprised when somebody calls a timeout on you. Rebbe had turned 28 years old yesterday, the Boston, Massachusetts native. Facing Austin Meadows, just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. It's a fly ball toward left field, and approaching the fence. The catch is made by Bader. Almost.
Allen, can he help that work? Super Bowl look at some of the action tonight. 5-4 Cardinals going to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Tyler Glass now relieves Trevor Williams, who gave up five in five, nine hits, a walk, four strikeouts. And Tyler's been uh, pitching in a little bit more uh, important situations of late, closer ball games. Of his seems to be getting better and better every time out. When that happens, the great stuff he has takes over. Colton Wong, and he does not get the strike call. Nope. Uh, most of the baseball was over the plate. Surprised that they missed that one. Right side, diving stop. Harrison from the seat of his pants. Infield hit for Wong. Well, Jay Hayden does his best to uh, turn this into a Just didn't quite have the direction on it. It might even. Been close, don't you think? If that's a maybe on target, that's going to be bang bang. Matt Carpenter now. Ground ball to Mercer. He's going to have to keep it himself. And that will cost them a chance for the double play in that shift. Well, if it's not a shift, it's a base hit the center. So they get one out of it. Here's the Mercer play. If it's not a shift, there's nobody there, and that ball just rolls out in the center field. But Mercer is there. Great there's effort. nobody to throw the ball to, so you Great get effort, one. You get one. Yeah. Pretty look pretty cool. Jump throw. Harrison Bader is two for three. Lifts this one to right. Oh, last now a ground ball. So, what four pitches? Yeah, ground ball that went for a hit. A ground ball that produced an out, and now a fly out. Bob said, well, featuring Glass now now in higher level situation. It's their efficiency now. Yeah. The bug that yeah. Now. <laughs> Asked Neil Huntington the other day on his radio show. You intrigued at the thought of Glass now starting again the way he's pitching. Long hesitation by the Pirates general manager. Uh, admitted, yeah, because he continues to improve and get the impression that he is going to get a shot at some point. Of course, always talk about the number of starting pitchers you need in a long baseball season. No, I've always got the impression that uh, that's you know, been the long term plan all oh, along yeah. was to, you know, to really get him into a pretty good spot coming out of the bullpen, get the confidence to where he really truly believes, okay, I'm a good big league pitcher, and then try to, if, you know, if a spot develops and put him back in there. Breaking ball is fouled off. But he's pitching so well out of the bullpen right now, too, that there's no. No urgency to push him into that starting rotation. Except that his stuff is so good, and because the plan all along was he could yeah. be a dominant starter, that's the the delicate balance there. I think you need to. There has to be a need before you move yeah. him in there. Yeah. Again, doesn't get the call. Most of the baseball in that strike zone. Yeah. I wish Cervelli would say something. Yeah. That was a it's been so quiet. Breaking ball sometimes are hard to uh, 
to get called at the, at the knees. Bouncing ball and sneaks through. Tommy Pham singles. A couple of grounders going for hits now. Often talk about how he's always into every pitch, thinking ahead every play. I don't know how many people caught it, but yesterday that little scrum at second base, this ball lined to right, Polanco is there. Oh, Glass now pitches a scoreless bottom of the sixth. We'll talk more about Jay Hay when we come back. Josh Harrison will be leading things off. We're talking about guy being in the game all the time. How about during this little scrum? Just as look, look at there's Harrison. He was on first base. He's the guy that hit the ground ball. While everybody else was getting involved in front of second, he ran to second from first base. And he's asking the second base umpire, wait, nobody called time. Yeah, I'm going to third. Albert, Albert Almore is having some fun with him saying, no, no, I'm let, not letting you go to no, third. That's interference. You can't interfere with yeah. a base runner like that. But he is always into it and just. He's, How he's, about if they allowed that? Like, okay, no one called time. Yeah, he in, scores on that. And nobody called time. He said <laughs> Bill Wilkie said he had called time. That you saw him there asking him. And then Almora grabbed him and said, "Oh, no, I'm not letting you go any further." Eventually, they just put him back at first base. Strike. One ball, one strike, facing Brebia. Here in the seventh, down a run. And a pop up. Easy for Fowler. This week, all new edition of Inside Pirates Baseball. Austin Meadows' impressive start in the big leagues may seem surprising, but not to some of his teammates. Plus, in all the majors, there isn't a better offensive catching tandem than Francisco Cervelli and Elias Diaz, and it's not even close. Those stories, plus top plays, debuting Saturday after Pirates post game. Here is Francisco Cervelli. Ground ball. 
a sneak through. Oh, oh and kick off the knee. It's a double now. So Cervelli's going to wind up at second base as Munoz went into that slide. And it turns out to be very costly because it kicked off his knee. It's going to be a single and an E6. <laughs> oh, man. I've heard a lot of baseball people wonder why these infielders go into that slide. Well, the only legitimate reason to go into a slide is to come to a stop. Other than that, there is not. Hit and an error and a man in scoring position, Mike Maddox. Pitching coach. Time to lay a hand. Yep, this is his signature move, the right hand on the left shoulder. Maddox in his first year as Cardinals pitching coach, but he's been around a while. There's the hard throwing Jordan Hicks, the rookie. Starting to loosen up. That's the uh, 38th error charged to the Cardinals. Only the Phillies and Giants have committed more errors than the Cardinals this year. See if Marte can really make that one hurt. Not that he hits into many double plays, but that took the DP away. Now a hit can tie this thing up. He's 0 for 3. Came in tied for 8th in the National League and hitting at 309. You see it's dropped to 303. has grounded his short, struck out, and fly to right. Cervelli base hit. On base for a second straight time. In scoring position. Today has done good work in these situations. Sitting on 23 ribbies. Almost chased. And Cervelli watching closely as that ball started to dribble outside the dirt circle behind the plate. He wasn't sure where it was, took him a while to find it. He may have kicked it a little bit here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, that'd have been something if the Pirates got another 90 feet because of that. Okay. Ooh, yeah. We're watching Real Madrid. Yeah. And a bouncing ball off the glove of the shortstop Munoz. And he almost slowed that down enough in the shallow center that. The Pirates almost scored another run. Base hit for Marte. The defense very important. Hey, who, he went to the ground on that one too, Greg. Oh, he sure did. Yeah, he asked the question, why? That's going to be. You know, had a little degree of difficulty even if he catches that now he's going to stand up turn and throw out Marte. One thing for sure if, if, he, if he keeps his feet and tries to make that play might be a question of whether it's an error or a hit by going down to the ground the official score automatically uh, automatically gives Marte a hit and Mike Matheny going to make another double switch we're going to see an interesting matchup here coming up.
Josh Bell said interesting matchup because you've got one of the hardest throwing pitchers in baseball on the mound. Jordan Hicks the rookie. Against Josh Bell who homered. In this ball game, tying it up in the fifth. It amazes me that he doesn't have more strikeouts than he does. Uh, but that's why he's coming in here with that big fastball. They, they would like to get a strikeout from him. Runner at third, just one out. Tying run at third. Ted Jerko comes in to play third base, part of this double switch. Matt Carpenter moving from third over to first. Now he does have a down movement on that high velocity fastball, which even if it does get in play, it could be tough to get in the air. Also looking for a double play ball. Because of that, it's a 2 0 now. Marte loves to run. They're taking a big chance trying to steal against the Cardinals. They've already thrown out zero guys this year. <laughs> Sorry, that record still intact. That, that amazes me. They have thrown yeah. out none. Zero all year. And it's 3 0. Oh. So Corey Dickerson on deck. Three balls, no strikes on Bell with the Pirates down one. Yeah, Yadier Molina, of course, big reason they haven't thrown anybody out yet because he's been out much of the season. Three and oh. Ball four. They're loaded for Corey Dickerson. Thought that was an interesting matchup. How about this one? Well, I see a base at the left coming up now. Or how about this, Greg? But he got a ground ball right just inside the third base back. Oh, that would be beautiful. Which I guess technically is a base hit the left. Sure it is. Not a single. Cervelli Marte Bell the runners. A four pitch walk to Bell. Dickerson takes a strike at 100 miles per hour. Two for three tonight. Those two hits against the starter Flaherty. Oh, almost exactly what you had predicted. Hey, it, it's still oh, and two. It's the, I mean, it's you look at the pitcher, you look at the hitter. It's the scenario sets up for that kind of a hit right there. Mm. You know, I was going to choke way up. Thinking both guys' styles, you know. Yeah. You see the runners again: Cervelli, Marte, Bell. One out, down one. 31 runs batted in for Dickerson to lead the Pirates. And a ground ball to the shortstop. Six, four, three, double play. Wow. Munoz to Wong to Carpenter. Tough to get in the air. Mm. Inning ending double play. Cardinals still lead it.
opportunity there. And Jordan Hicks after walking Josh Bell on four pitches. Gets Dickerson to bounce into the double play 102 miles an hour. Well you could you know could just feel at least I did that there was going to be a, you know a ball hit to that side of the field that you know Dickerson was just going to try and punch that ball out the left but with that downward motion of that 102 mile an hour fastball it's hard to get in the air and if it was right at somebody it's going to be a double play and that's what happened it was right at the shortstop. Back to Tyler Glass down the bottom of the seventh inning facing Dexter Fowler. Couple of hits two run single in that four run first against Trevor Williams. From Glass now. I've seen a hundred much from him this year, but no, it's in there. A lot of high 90s. And he gets <laughs> Fowler after the hundred. He is a talent, isn't he? Yes. It truly is. This is what you think about when you watch him in think about how nice small it would be to have that samples six or seven innings yeah, every, absolutely. every five days. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Munoz had a critical two run double in that first inning. Now, Greg, you do agree with me that most of the good hitters were 24, right? Yes. There's so Glass, Glass now. now just took that on as a challenge when he got his number. I want 24. I want the best guys. Well, he also hits like a 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. So he's a 24 as a hitter. I was talking to uh, Stephen Brault today about that. That you look at what. Musgrove did yesterday in all facets and you know did you guys learned that at that Grossmont High School how to run the bases like they well, he's a really good athlete as I see that but I mean just the slide and he he basically said that you know he knows that he and Musgrove and Glass now can do those things run the bases and hit and in this case a one two three seven for glass now. TNT Sportsnet is brought to you by the Chevy Silverado and your Western PA Chevy dealers.
and by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! It's a 5-4 ball game and last couple shots here for the Pirates down one to the Cardinals in the first of this four game series. Colin Moran will be leading things off looking for his first hit. Cardinals about hit the Pirates 11 9. Cubs are leading the Mets 5 1 going to the bottom of the ninth inning in New York as they start their four game series. Hicks after walking Bell on four pitches. To load the bases, got Dickerson to bounce into the inning ending double play. A hundred, ball one. Polanco, Mercer. And to left field and a base hit for Colin Moran. 98 miles an hour, lined it to left. They got a ball that was elevated a little bit so he could get it in the air. That fastball was uh, yeah, right about belt high. That's one of the things that uh, I remember Bell saying uh, last time that they played the Cardinals at home and when Hicks comes in you got to get him up a little bit again. Make sure the ball is uh, not down around the knees. Sean Rodriguez pinch running now for Moran. Polanco to the plate. Polanco had two good at bats against the righty Flaherty but struck out against the lefty Lions. Called time. He wants the uh, signs again. Or goes to another set. One one. Even. Polanco returned to the lineup last night. Clint Hurdle sat him against a couple of uh, lefty Cub starters. See uh, Adam Frazier next to Hurdle. Would uh, pinch hit for Glass now. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Down a run. Ooh. Marco's foot now in the hole. Have a strong foot. That would have crumbled a few people, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, he almost went down. Line bullet right off the inside of his foot. And he just okay. That'd have pretty good uh, exit velocity coming off that yeah. bat. Basement. I know. Decides to throw over. I think that's what they're talking about right there. People saw the umpire smile. Five four Cardinals. Pirates have collected ten hits. Cardinals have eleven. 
Polanco rips it toward right center field. His third hit looks like it's going to tie the game. Gregory Polanco into second base. It's 5-5. He has three hits, two doubles, and he drives in the game tying run in the eighth. And that, the excellent exit velocity on that one. Definitely uh, equaling the, the speed of that one they hit off his foot. Go away. They've been going away with him today. And another ball that hits did not get down. It's elevated and it gets hit to the outfield. Rodriguez knew that was a gap shot. Yeah, there's no having to wait, see if it's going to fall. It's in the gap. Just keep running. Still in business. Nobody out. Mercer now. Try and bunt that heater. No sacrifice bunts for Mercer. In fact, Adam Frazier is the only position player on the Pirates this, this year that has a sacrifice head. Not bunting there. Your guy's a good fastball hitter, but I think that's generally speaking, right, Bob? Don't you? Well, this this is like a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. But he still hits heat. Yep. Now bunting. And foul. So the bunt was on for the first pitch, not for the second. Was on for the third. Now yeah, what? I mean, there's two schools of thought here. Yeah, you want to bunt the guy over, but the other thing is, well, it's a big league hitter. He should be able to hit the ball that way, and then he might even get a hit. So there might be a little bonus. Uh, you know, he could hit a ground ball that side, could hit a fly ball to right, whatever. Should still move the run over other than a bunt, and he may get a hit that way. Um, you know, the other school of thought is, heck with all that, just move the runner with a bait, with a with a bunt. Not bunting there at 100 upstairs. Mercer singled in the Pirates' first run in the second inning. Look at that scoreboard again. Five runs, 11 yeah, hits, everything five even runs, again. 11 Typical hits. Pirates Cardinals. They fight to the ninth inning. Yeah. It seems like every game. One. Pretty remarkable. These major league hitters. <laughs> Hundred and one miles an hour. Rookie Jordan Hicks. Gave up the hit to Moran. Polanco doubled him home. Lifted toward right. See what Polanco does. It's shallow. Not going anywhere. Poor throw by Fowler, but you didn't know that until he threw it. So one out, Adam Frazier now. He's going to pinch hit for Glass now. Numbers for Adam Frazier. Hit hitter yesterday and drew a walk. Hitch hit on Tuesday and singled. In the ninth inning. Oh, that would have been nice again, but foul. Now that uh, Boston Meadows is here, Frazier starting role has been reduced dramatically and the most used pinch hitter this season. He's two for 18. He 
did start on Sunday against these Cardinals and a two run triple. One ball one strike. Double barrel action in the Cardinal bullpen. There's no getting around that Adam has uh, not hit this year like he has in the past with us. But sometimes it's kind of hard to get out of a funk when you're not a you know getting regular bats every day. And again up three and one. Cardinals. Mike Myers, Bud Norris, Bud Norris is their closer. Two and two on Frazier. has now faced five pirate hitters since coming on last inning. Walking Bell getting Dickerson to ground into the double play and this frame single double fly out. Three and two. It's like his last batter with the two righties up including the closer. 21 year old Jordan Hicks facing Adam Frazier. Houston Texas native supplemental third round pick three years ago and he walks Frazier to put two on. Very now we'll see what Mike Bethany yeah. decides to do. Be very interesting to see what kind of a low he makes if any here. Well it's going to be the pitching coach Mike Maddox. Their pitcher spot hits six next inning. So I don't think you can bring in the closer here. I wonder why the closer is lo loosening now. Maybe because if they get something going on offense, that yeah. six spot right. would be an important. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to pinch hit, right? Doesn't make you wonder why Norris could. is up. Yeah, that's why I've been wondering. I guess I could double switch if they brought him into the ball game and and move that uh, pitcher spot further away from. The, the yeah. six hole. Push it down a little bit. Well, he's a uh, stay in the game for now against a guy who also uh, talked about Mercer, a good fastball hitter. Here's one. Been kind of popular over the last year and a half or so for managers to bring in the closer with two outs in the eighth with, with a lead. Yeah. Yeah, but a 5 5 game, it's just kind of curious. It just makes you wonder at what point would he bring him in in this inning? You know, if, if not now, if you're, if you're coming in, you just figure, okay, we need to get Harrison and Cervelli now. Now it might be Hicks who gets him. 0 and 2 on Jay Hay. Single to start the ball game. Mm -hmm. 0 and 2. Count remains. Well, how does he foul that on? <laughs> right on his hands at 100 miles an hour. Able to get a piece of it, stay alive. We're talking, I think, somewhere around four tenths of a second when that ball leaves the pitcher's hand until it hit the front of home plate. We got a piece of that. You think about four tenths of a second, it's like you know, the, the old 1001 was about 1000. Yeah. Not even one foul. It's just about, about just the blink one, of an eye. Almost. One. Yeah. So if you're in your kitchen and you, you know, get the broom out and hold it there and and look out in the backyard and you think, okay, somebody is throwing something at me and it's going to take maybe two blinks of an eye for it to get here and I got to decide whether to swing this broom or not. Yeah. 
I mean, that's gra grab the broom. Think about and a fly ball to right. It's going to be the second out. Milanko is trying to advance. And he'll get there. Oh, backing up wisely is Hicks, and also just as wise and aware, Adam Frazier moves up. Fowler will get an error. Should. Polanco yeah. advancing on the fly out and Frazier advancing on the error by Fowler. Well, there's the throw to Polanco, but it gets past Jerko. And Jerko must have thought that was going to get cut off. He just stood there. Well, now Mike Matheny is going to double switch, Bob. Yeah, he has to. He can't afford to bring in his uh, closer when that spot might hit next inning for him. Well, let's see if the Pirates can't do it with two outs. Tie game. Home in the office or on the go with MLB.tv. Your subscription includes MLB at bat premium, allowing you to watch on your favorite supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Well, Marcel Osuna comes on to play left, moving from left to, to right is Harrison Bader. So Mike Matheny does by himself one spot in the batting order for Bud Norris to move down instead of hitting in the four spot is in the fifth spot. Do you see Bud's numbers? And as Bob said earlier, the pitcher would be due up sixth. Now, with the change, due up seven. Here's Cervelli against Norris, the closer. Francisco Cervelli trying to get one or both home, Polanco and Frazier. Polanco's double tied it. Two and oh. with two outs and runners in scoring position hitting 364 in these situations. But Norris with 11 saves. 
opponents hitting only 215 against him. Having a great year. And a strike. earned saves in back-to-back -back games last Saturday and Sunday against the Pirates. Two-and-two. Got two pitches solidly in the zone. Not really upset at the umpire there. I think it was. Thought that was going to be inside and realized it what? Cervelli is three for eight in his career against Bud Norris. Marte on deck. Five five. Top of the eighth. Announced paid attendance of 40,832. And three and two and a lunge there from Pena. Full count. As Cervelli in a pitch he might be able to hit. Polanco, Frazier, the runners. Marte would be next. Three and two. And a drive toward left field. Osuna is back and at the wall. It is gone. No. No, it's off no, the top of the wall. wall. There's no sign from anybody. The third base umpire, Marvin Hudson, went out. Now he's calling it a home run. It's a three-run homer for Francisco Cervelli. Vita Bella. How about this? Now the big smile. The Pirates have <laughs> taken an 8-5 lead. Oh, look at that. The king of the two-out RBI. Home <laughs> run number eight. The Bucks have come back from a 4-0 deficit, and they get the huge hit from Francisco Cervelli. Greeting the closer, Bud Norris with a three-run homer. Cervelli having a career year here the last day of May, hitting home run number eight, which is a new career high for him. He went out and hooked that breaking ball, too. That ball's down and, down and away. It's obviously a, uh, a home run. They got over that the first wall. It's the railing up on the uh, second level. Here comes Mike Matheny. Now the the home run signal. Well, we we called it initially the home run, but he gave safe some. Then we looked at the umpiring crew, and yeah, not sure until finally. I mean, look at the. Uh, oh yeah. They, yeah. Mr. Cervelli saying, hey, well, I saw it go out. Now it's a home run, okay. It's almost like they listened to Cervelli. Yeah. Because what else could change your mind? But uh, I think it they, def definitely was a home run. I think this strategy by Matheny backfired a little bit. He's now, of course, his closer have give, has given up the three-run homer. He will go to the new pitcher. The Pirates lead it 8-5. to five.
taking an 8-5 lead. Francisco Cervelli, a three-run homer off Bud Norris. That gives the Pirates this three-run lead. And some tweets, the reaction as Cervelli hits the home run off of Bud Norris. And he said, wait a minute, that's a home run, isn't it? I agree. <laughs> And for whatever reason, the umpires changed their minds and said, yeah, you're right. Continue on. Now Starling Marte faces Mike Myers. We talked about this at the outset, that if you could get to this bullpen. And the Pirates really did slow things down. They started to scratch and claw against Flaherty. Down four. In the first, they got the RBI hit from Mercer, which was big, scoring Colin Moran. Corey Dickerson led off that second with a base hit. You look at the Myers numbers. Then in the fourth inning, Polanco, after Dickerson led off, Polanco doubled his second hit of the night. That made it 4-2. to two. They tied it in the fifth as Marte drives one deep to right. And Bader makes the catch. Bell hit the home run that tied it. Cardinals took the lead in the fifth. The Pirates take the lead here in the eighth. The three run homer to give the Pirates the 8 5 lead. The Battle and Buccos of 2018. Gregory Polanco entered this game at a career high 0 for 22 hitless string, but singled in the second, doubled in the run in the fourth, and the game tying double in the top of this inning that scored the pinch runner, Sean Rodriguez, and tweets reacting to Gregory Polanco on his three hit night. It's a good one there. That's why you can't just give up on Polanco. That pretty much says it all. That's why the Pirates just continue to be patient with him. Not that this is one night going to end uh, his struggles, but it's a heck of a start. You all one what, on. What I'd like about tonight, Greg, I, I, I think that um, the struggle started when he was really getting pounded inside a lot. Right. And then it got to a point, in, uh, you know, I think really in this uh, 0 for 22 string you talked about where he wasn't even hitting the balls away that, that he usually hits very well, the ones that are out over the plate. Tonight, when they've gone away on, in the middle of that outside half, he's hit those yeah. balls hard. And that's, you know, his bread and butter. I mean, you're not going to be able to command the entire strike zone as a hitter. You know, There's going to be weak spots. But when they throw the ball where you like it, with that your strong spot, you got to do something with it. He hasn't been doing that of late tonight. He definitely has done it. I didn't pay enough attention to know, but I do remember the one before his first 
hit that uh, I believe it might have been the double to right center field, but the, well, the one pitch, Bob, that was hard in that he fouled off. I mean that that too that he was able to battle. Got a piece of it. Back. Yeah. But I think pitchers are guilty of the same thing. You you spend so much time and effort dealing with what you're weak yeah. at. Yeah. And you neglect what you're good at mm -hmm. to where now that starts to slip away. And, and that's not the whole the whole issue by any means, but I think that's one of the problems of late was he he just hadn't been hitting his pitch. Cervelli gonna get there. I bet you that arm is feeling a little bit better now. Yeah. He's I think got, so. He's got it covered up though. I see. He's maybe a compression sleeve or something on it. Here's Kyle Crick who uh, will be tried in the eighth inning. Myers have gone with Contos, uh, Michael Felice, and now Kyle Crick. Yeah, he was good yesterday. Myers 1 2 1. Sean Rodriguez, by the way, stays in the game to play third. Yeah, Crick had a 1 2 3 eighth inning. This ball towards center field, and this could be a quick second out for Crick. Got the 1 2 going. Long retired. Going back to Polanco and his three hits tonight. Oh, you watch the locations. Okay, outside half, hard hit ball. Outside corner, another well hit ball, and another outside half, and this ball was blistered. So th those are his pitches, that outside half of the plate. That's where he's always hit the ball well. And he did it again tonight. Are 14 and 1 when he drives in a run this year as uh, Matt Carpenter shows bunt. If Pirates can get four more outs, that record will improve to 15 and 1 when Polanco drives in at least a run. Kyle Crick was the closer at AAA Sacramento last year, the Giants organization. Two outs, but the tough Carpenter 2 0 count. Crick appeared in 30 major league games for the Giants last year in a 3 0 6 ERA. Again, showing bunt with Rodriguez back, and now it's 3 0. Remember last. Weekend at PNC Park, uh, Carpenter dropped down a bunt for a hit. Cut. Give it to him. They're down three. Well, Carpenter knows he's they need base runners, so he's doing everything he can to to get on here. That's why he's thinking about bunt. Bunts it foul. He bunted for a hit against. Richard Rodriguez on Saturday. You know what? I, I, I've said this many times. In these scenarios where you just get a bunt down that side, even if it's a hard bunt, it's an easy base hit for you because there's nobody there. Hitters still try to bunt like they're bunting for a base hit. Like they're, they're starting to run yeah. as they bunt it. Like they're, they're moving to, in the box. Trying to beat yeah. it out. So just squaring early. Yeah, and bunting it. That Line drive center field. Marte is there. And it's three up and three down for Kyle Crick.
Mason. Pre-game show coverage getting underway at 7.30 for the Pirates and the St. Louis Cardinals. The Bucks will send Jamison Tyone to the hill against Miles Michaelis. Still undefeated, though the Pirates uh, thought they are going to tag him for a loss. The Cardinals came back in his start on Sunday. Now it's the Pirates' turn to come back against the Redbirds. Boy, a lot of you know, three more outs to get, but uh, there are a lot of players on this team. One of those team victories it could be as Bell is retired. There will be some dancing. There will be some dancing for sure. You look again at the, how the comeback happened. Well, you really have to start with Trevor Williams bending, giving up those four, and battling, and then the offense as uh, Williams and Tyler Glass now. Now Kyle Crick holding down the Cardinals. They did score that one run in the fifth inning to take the lead back. Here's Crick. Two straight scoreless outings. In fact, six up, six down as the eighth inning man. Back-to-back -back games. There's Felipe. Getting ready. Well, he'd be throwing 100 tonight. We've seen several uh, triple digits tonight's ball game already. Class now hit 100. There's Dickerson is facing the flamethrower Hicks. In the seventh inning, with the bases loaded, one out and bounced into the double play, but his teammates picked him up. He had two hits in his first two times to the plate tonight. Scored the second run on the double by Polanco in the fourth. Huh. Eight runs, 12 hits for the Pirates. Dickerson goes down. Mike Myers retired the three Pirates he's faced. It's coming on after the home run was hit by Francisco Cervelli against Bud Norris. Sean Rodriguez first at bat tonight. Which ran for Colin Moran. Shout out to Hank Brown, another Hank, watching after uh, spending the night at uh, Allegheny General. Hank, all right? He's in good shape. Good shape now, thanks to Dr. Nick. Thanks to Tirianos. Great folks at Allegheny Health Network. I remember when Hank was uh, one time a world class softball player. Yeah. That was ages ago. Yep. And down on strikes goes Sean Rod. Kidding, of course, Henry. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Pirates need three outs.
what would be a very satisfying come from behind victory the last day of May. Here is Felipe. Felipe's uh, numbers, a little bit of a rough spot there for a while, but seems to be back on track uh, after a little bit of an injury scare, at least to uh, us, uh, maybe not to him. Clint Hurdle said uh, yesterday that he has to find where that MRI machine is because after going into the MRI machine, he comes out throwing harder than he was before. The magic machine. <laughs> yeah. He found that 100 mile hour fastball after uh, undergoing the MRI the other day. Yeah, but it was scary, He's shaking that left arm. 98 up, picked up his 10th save yesterday. And the 2-1 victory over the Cubs at PNC Park. Kind of been talking about his velocity since that little uh, scare, but I, th I thought he threw some outstanding changes yes. yesterday. Yep. He really uh, was able to, to spot him, and you know that's the kind of the key for him. If he can put that change up where he wants to, to mix that with his velocity, uh, for me that's his second best pitch. Everybody has to get all hyped up for the fastball. Tonight, so far, just in the high 90s, nothing uh, triple digits. By Bader, three and one. Bader has two hits in this ball game. Tommy Pham on deck, and then Marcel Osuna. Save it for Tyler Glass now. Pitch two scoreless in relief of Trevor Williams, who went the first five, gave up five. Kyle Crick, one, two, three, eight. Ripped past Rodriguez. Fair ball. Bader will wind up at second with a leadoff double. 97 miles an hour ripped past third by Harrison Bader. That's why you need that change up. Anybody can pull your 97 down the left field line. I don't believe that they'd be in a real good position to hit, hit a change up that's well located away. Especially if it's down a little bit. But you gotta have the command of it to be able to throw it three and two. Now Tommy Pham. No, that was a slider or whatever you call it. Yeah. At 80, it had to be a curveball. Off the glove of Rodriguez. That was a changeup. First and second, nobody out. It will be an error on the Pirates' third baseman who pinch ran for Colin Moran in the eighth and stayed in the game to play third. These are the way these uh, Cardinal Pirate games go. And, you know, you think, well, oh, you get a comfortable lead, but it's almost like they're, they're, they're going to figure out a way to get the tying run to the plate, and it's going to be a contest yep. tonight. And here's Marcelo Suna, his first at bat of the ball game. He jammed his uh, finger a couple games ago. This brings the crowd to life. Announced again at the uh, Nearly 41,000, but not, not nearly that many were on hand. Many left. Well, Marcelo Osuna. And it's 2-0. and oh.
Time for Cervelli. Talk things over here. Yeah, they've uh, they've left enough mound visits in the game. That Plenty they're, available. They're, yeah, there's always available, you know, to take them when you you really need them. And that this is a time where <laughs> you got to get together and do a little talking. I think they're uh, maybe going to adjust the signs, perhaps. Don't know if they've been using the same thing the entire game or not, but there's been a number of guys out at second base. And to be honest with you guys watching the game on television, that they could uh, maybe figure out the signs by now, so you got to change them occasionally. Popped up, that's going to be out of play. First strike now on Osuna. Too, that when Vasquez, when he does have the dip in velocity, he's going, you know, 96, 97, uh, you know, right now. And that's a dip down from, you know, 100, 101, 99 that he was throwing uh, a couple nights ago. A couple nights ago, he was throwing strikes where he wants oh, yeah, to with absolutely. that fastball. It seems like on the nights where the velocity is not there, controls the don't. control's not yeah. there either. I agree. Voigt is going to pinch hit just up from the miners. One of the transactions. And a uh, couple of moves uh, this afternoon. The old deal uh, went down. One of many transactions. 42 in the month of May. <laughs> One month. Field at double play depth. Hefty swing. Yeah, it's just that's 96. It's four or five mile an hour down from where he was a couple nights ago. There's no rhyme or reason to it. about the control. Yeah, there was a, a change up. Nice time for a change up and I mean, look, look where it is. It's up and away by quite a bit. So there's the command right now is probably as much an issue as anything when, when the bases are loaded. It's a strike there. It's curveball over. It's not fastball, change up, curveball. toward left field and a base hit. One in. They're going to try and score a couple. Play a third maybe? Nope. Safe there. It's a one-run game. And the tying run is 90 feet away. The potential winning run is at first base. Boy, that was a big risk Osuna took with nobody out. I mean, it paid off big time. It was really uh, puts the Pirates in a tough spot. But man, if, if he would have been out at third trying to, to move over. Rodriguez saw it happening right in front of him. He actually charges that ball 
to, to get to it as soon as he could instead of waiting for it to get to him. Quickly underhanded it to, over to Jordy or Sooner was just, just barely getting in there. Luke Weaver, the pinch runner at first base for Voight. Pitcher, Luke Weaver. Munoz uh, does the right thing. If he's not sure, you got to call time in this scenario. This situation, uh, you know. You can't take anything for granted. Don't think, well, I thought I saw the squeeze. Or... Got to go ask. And now Edgar Santana throwing, and Pirates are really in the soup. The infield will come in. And you know, again, Felipe, when he is on, he's getting, if not strikeouts, as we saw the other day, the swings and misses were back, but not much of it here. You could, needless to say, really use a strikeout. And a fly ball hit deep to center field. This is unbelievable. It's gone, and the Cardinals win in incredible fashion. Munoz, a two-run homer, a three-run homer, his second, and the Cardinals win it. Unbelievably, 10-8. to eight. This is uh, incredible. I don't even, I can't believe what I just saw. But Vasquez was not the uh, pitcher. I mean, we talked about the whole inning that you know, we saw just a couple of days ago after that little problem he had. And this ball, and this wasn't just a home run. This halfway up the batter's eye. This was a blast off Vasquez. That's, it's an unbelievable loss here. A great win, obviously, for the Cardinals. I mean, you, you talk I mean, about a heartbreaker. He knows he's yep. crushed it. My goodness gracious. And, and as great a win as it was for them, how tough a loss oh. is it for the for the Bucks down in that dugout right now? They're, uh, they're all inside by now, but still. Well, you, you felt fighting like... back down by four in the first inning, and you know you, you have uh, you know Williams really kind of bow his neck and, and keep you in the ball game, let you get back, and then you end up taking a very comfortable three-run lead into the ninth inning. And this is a uh, that's a heartbreaker. But it is, a, you know, it's different from other sports. It is the baseball season. They got to come right back out and play again tomorrow, and somehow get this one behind them. Wow! 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 Back to the studios.